Well, good morning, family and friends. Welcome to our weekly devotion called Double Dose of Hope. And uh, this morning we are so glad that you join us. And we're going to speak about seeking after God. It's a time to seek God. The Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 10, But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Let's look at Matthew 6 verse 35 that says, But first seeing the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We know all those things uh, is the, 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 the things that we need to sustain life. Food, clothes, and um, the Bible used the example of the birds of the sky and the lilies of the, fa- of, of the field that God provides for them. But the key is to seek God first. That means to put God above all else. That God will be the one that you seek after in your heart. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, first seek the kingdom of God. And that first speaks about the order of importance. You know, when we say we seek God, it doesn't mean that God is hiding away from us. That we've lost God, like if when you lose your keys... I'm looking for my keys. I'm seeking away. It's that God wants us to, to, to experience Him, but He wants us to hunger for Him. That seek is a hunger. It's an order of priorities. God wants to be in the highest place. He wants to be number one in your life. God and His kingdom, one. putting God first. It's all about prioritizing our lives. Each one of us has a set of priorities. And you know what? What's so important? Your priorities determines how you spend your time and with whom you spend your time and how do you make decisions. Your priorities determines that. So if God is number one, you're going to spend your time wisely. If God is number one in your life, even the time that you spend with some people around your space, friends, will help you. It will be godly people taking you forward, not back. And the way you make decisions is really seeking God in time of prayer and supplication. Because, you know, we need to make godly decisions in this life. So, seeking God is putting God in the center, in the middle of your life. I want to say this to you. If God is right now, in this season of our our South African history, the center of your life, you will find your life being balanced. There won't be chaos. Your life won't be out of order. Your life would have been balanced. There will be joy. There will be strength in times of crisis if God is number one, if you seek Him with all your heart. So what does it mean to seek God? And yes, the definition I want you to remember. To remember. Seeking God means a conscience focusing our mind's attention and our heart's affection on God. It's a conscience focusing of your mind's attention. What do you think about? What do you meditate? And our heart's affection. What do you love? What's the desire of your heart? What, what's that that, stern you, that, that that turns your heart around? And seeking God has both effect on our mind and on our heart. Your mind is the battlefield of the enemy and your heart is the passions of life. We say, Lord, I give you my heart. We say, I love you with all my heart. So that's what seeking God means. It's that that conscience focusing. Find yourself, disciplining yourself, educating yourself to find yourself, your mind on God, attention, and your heart's affection on God. Listen how the Bible puts it in 1 Chronicles 22 verse 19. It says, Now set your mind and heart to seek the Lord your God. Set your mind and heart to seek the Lord your God. You cannot just see God with your heart. And you cannot just see God with your mind. You have your total being seeking God to have a balanced life, to have a prosperous life. Can I ask you this morning, are you seeking God? So Martin, I think so. Well, if you see God, there there will be a factor in your life. We call it a craving. To see God is to pursue God. It's a craving. You know, uh, sometimes I really crave a chocolate. I, I really love chocolate. And um, so I would sit and I would crave chocolate. And so much so that, that that craving would force me to get up, get into my car and drive to the shop to buy myself a chocolate. 
You know, I remember to my wife when I was, was pregnant with our first baby. I was around about 8 o'clock. She just said to me, I crave for garlic snails. I looked at her shock because she doesn't, she doesn't like garlic snails. So I crave it. I said, no, baby, we're going to make something. I said, please. So we got into the car, drove down to a place in Alberton, and ordered garlic snails. <laughs> and when we got home, she just opened it up. And, well, you know, she was pregnant. You can just think of, she, she didn't eat it. Let me go that way. But there was a craving, and that craving brought us to a action. If you say you see God, there will be action in your life. It will be with all your heart. You know, it requires something to see God. It says, God, you are vital. You're a vital necessity of my life. I cannot live without you. I cannot live without you. There should be an intimate, personal relationship with God. You know, there's a great difference between knowing someone and knowing about someone. You know, when you know about someone, something about someone, it's like our president. Um, Sarah Maposa. You can know the most intimate details of him when you Google his life. Where did he live? How much vehicles did he has? Even maybe his financial state? Where's his farm? That kind of stuff. But it does not say that you know him. You know about him, but you don't know him. You know, there's many people. Can I go? Many people that, that knows about Jesus. They've heard about him, maybe attend the church, maybe now and then read their Bibles, but they don't know him. There's no intimate relationship. See, each one of us, if you understand a human being, each one of us has a God-shaped voidness, a vacuum in our lives that only God can fill. A God-shaped emptiness that God can fill in life. It's easy to fill that God-shaped emptiness with stuff. You can fill it with wealth and a position in your workspace, or a big house, or, or a car. But the Bible says that things will, those things will perish. God is the only entity, the person of Jesus Christ, that can fill that vacuum and sustain you with life. So we need to, to seek after God, because God is the only person, can I say it again, that can satisfy your soul. The only person. Listen to what Psalm 107 verse 9 says. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Can you hear that deep scream of the heart? You know, you can be with people. You can even be on holiday. You can find yourself on the beach and still have this scream inside. Still have this emptiness, this voidness that's calling for something. You know, that, that is seeking God. That is calling for God. Because God says, I will satisfy the longing soul and I will fill the hungry soul with goodness. If you really want to know how, what it means to seek after God, you can look at Psalm 63, a psalm of David. We all know David loved God. David wasn't perfect, but God said about David, he's the apple of mine. God said about David, he's a man after my own heart. Because God, David knew how to see God. You remember Siklach? He went and required of the Lord what should he do in his next phase of life. Let me read to you Psalm 63 verse 1. Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. So there's the, there's the backdrop. A wilderness. You can find yourself in a wilderness without water. Just think about the sun baking upon you, your lips cracking, and now you're crying for something. Because that's what you cry for in that instant will give you life. You're going to die of first or you can have water and live. Listen to what David says. Psalm of David. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Can you hear the total being seeking God? Not only my flesh, but also my soul. And then David used this word, so powerful word, earnestly. That means energetic. That means focused. That means he wants it so badly that he's willing to give up anything else to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I hope you're in that space this morning that you will desire of God, 
that you will desire more and more of God in your life. This is what David says. I shall seek him earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you. So this morning, I want to leave you this message this morning. What does it mean to see God? Actually, it just means to see God with an intense desire. That he will be number one in your life. Now the Bible talks about this in such a way. See, in Him we live and move and have our being. In Him, in Him, we live and move and have our being. So that's, that's my call upon you this morning. Seeking God in this season. Have that intense desire in your mind and in your heart to know God personally. And then all the other things shall be added unto you. Don't run around in this season looking for the other things. A better job, financial security, whatever it is the devil is offering you. But go to the one that can sustain, the one that gives you life, the one that loves you, called Jesus Christ. God bless you this morning, family. Amen. It just makes me think of the word that you brought on Sunday, you know, that God can do the impossible. So if you put him first... He can do things that you cannot even fathom, fathom or yeah. think of right now. Yeah. So, you know, I've learned in my life from the age of 16 when I accepted him as my savior, I can trust him with everything. He's my number one. Amen. And therefore, God has made my road smooth in life and gave me wonderful husband, wonderful children, and I can really testify, you know, if you put God first, if you seek him first, you'll never lack anything. Amen. And therefore, as we're going to take the communion this morning, know that you're part of the body of Christ and that he has broken his body so that you can have healing this morning. You are part of his body because you have a covenant with him. There's promises coming your way. Yes. And as you take this bread this morning, say thank you, Lord, for the promises, the new covenant, and for healing for my body. Amen. Amen. And in the same way, Jesus said, this is my blood. This is the, it's a symbol. The covenant is sealed in my blood. So you can be for sure. And this is also a sign that he'll be coming back for us soon. So look up, family, and know that Jesus is on his way for us. He can't wait to meet his bride. Amen. Amen. Thank you, family. Let's just pray together. Father, right now we come to you. And Lord, we seek after you. We place you on the highest priority in our lives. Yes. You're the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Yes. Lord, we declare with great boldness, in you we live and move and have our being. Mm -hmm. I thank you this morning, Lord, and I pray for a greater hunger and a greater thirst for the body of Christ, for our Savior, our Redeemer, for God, our Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that we can declare that we won't lack anything in this season. Mm -hmm. There might be a season of drought. Mm -hmm. There might be a season of not enough, but we will have more than enough. Okay. Your word says you've never seen the righteous begging for bread. Mm -hmm. Never, never, Lord. And I thank you, Father God that you are a covenant God, Amen. and we bless your people. As shepherds, Lord, we bless them mm. in Jesus' name. Amen. And we thank you, Father, mm. for your unconditional love and your faithfulness. You're a true God. You're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. Amen. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And family, thank you for joining us on Wednesdays. We're lo really looking forward. You know, it's a great, for us, it's a great morning on a Wednesday morning. You know, we can have fellowship with you. And uh, we want to invite you to our Sunday service on our social media platforms, our Facebook and YouTube. Please join us at half past nine. And uh, I believe the word will bless and encourage you every Sunday. Bye-bye. God bless.